Hello and welcome to my channel, I Went to Lose Gaming. In this video, I'll be comparing pre 1.6 overloaded damage to post 1.6 overloaded damage. So if you were like everyone in existence that plays Genshin Impact, you probably thought, wow, Electro is pretty weak. So what did MiHoYo do? Well, they decided to buff transformative reactions. Let's see how much they buffed it by. Really quick, post 1.6, the base damage from Overloaded with a level 90 Fischl with zero elemental mastery against a monster with 10% resistance to pyro damage is now 2,604. After dividing this by 0 0.9, we get 2,893 damage. This is a 20% increase in Overloaded's base damage from 1.5's 2,406 damage. Fortunately, before the patch, I recorded some footage of this Klee Fischl Sucrose composition focused on Overloaded damage. Let's see just how much 1.6 buffed an Overload focused team. Both Klee and Fischl are built with Elemental Mastery. I'm using a 1 star weapon on Klee, so her pyro damage doesn't annihilate everything. Her artifacts are providing her with 511 Elemental Mastery. Fischl has 900 Elemental Mastery and is using the Wind Bloom Ode. Sucrose is the usual 4 piece Viridescent Venera set with an Elemental Mastery sharing build and the Sacrificial Fragments. The idea of this team is to first lower the enemy's resistance to pyro damage with Klee and then an Anemo character like Sucrose, then to use Fischl to apply copious amounts of Electro application, thus proccing tons of overloads. As you can see, Fischl's overload in 1.5 did 11,649 damage in this situation. Next, taking a look at this 1.6 clip, we can see that Fischl's Overloaded did 23,700 damage. That's a pretty substantial boost. Overloaded is now doing a bit over twice as much damage in 1.5. This is both thanks to the 20% increase in base damage as well as the improved Elemental Mastery scaling, as seen in this formula thanks to Kaching Main's theorycrafting. Now let's have a quick 1.5 vs 1.6 overloaded DPS showdown, starting with our favorite frozen plant friend volunteer, the Cryo Regisvine. Next, it's Child's turn. I always enjoy beating up this calamity inducing Shneznaya man. And is there anything more satisfying than beating up child with a literal child? I think not. And finally, let's take a look at this fight against the Primo GeoVish app.
So in the end, the damage buffs from Overloaded has very noticeable improvements in this team composition's performance, but it is extremely important to note that I did not do any of these runs a whole lot of times. Really, I just did these a couple of times at most. And some of the clips had Klee proccing a lot more overloadeds in rapid succession thanks to Fischl's Ascension 4 than others, so that likely had a large effect on the results as well. But either way, we can see that Overloaded is now doing roughly twice as much damage in general. But now let's see if this is viable in an endgame situation, and if we can rely on overloaded damage in Abyss 12. We'll be replacing Sucrose with Venti because otherwise things are just going to be flying all over the place. And we'll also be adding Zhongli with just a pure shield support build, so that way I can focus purely on applying overloadeds and don't have to worry about taking damage. Venti is also using a level 50 Favonius Warbow to both nerf his damage a bit and to also provide some energy to Fischl. Keep in mind that without Venti, overload knocks things everywhere so I don't recommend this without Venti. I've also given Klee a level 90 3 star emerald orb to provide her with a bit more elemental mastery. I also need to emphasize that your mileage will not carry you as far as mine will in this situation. This is mostly for showcase purposes so keep all that in mind. Unfortunately for our overloaded comp, 1211 has pyro whopper flowers, and these things heavily resist pyro damage, and overloaded happens to do pyro damage. Nonetheless, this was still completed in a respectable 42 seconds. Floor 1221 is as annoying as always, but let's see how it does with the constant little overloads chipping away at everything. <laughs> Forty nine seconds while relying on overloaded damage is actually a fine performance, in my opinion. But now it's time for the dreaded twelve three one with the endlessly lecturing Abyss lecturers. <laughs>
So in the end, this overloaded damage focused team composition is actually able to comfortably 9 star Abyss 12. Now keep in mind this is with both Venti and Zhongli, which are two of the best supports in the game, but I'm sure this is possible with different team compositions as well. So what's the overall takeaway from this? Well, in MiHoYo's attempt to buff Electro through boosting transformative reactions, what they actually ended up doing was they ended up buffing Venti. That's right, Venti's burst now does noticeably more damage if there are three targets trapped in his tornado. His swirls are doing over 5,000 damage. Just take a look at some of this nonsense. Venti's burst alone almost took out the Pyro Whopper Flowers in 12-1-1, which is pretty insane. And in 12-2-1, Venti's burst is able to single-handedly wipe out the Treasure Hoarders in both the first wave and the second wave, which is absolutely nuts. So what is my opinion? First let's go over a few tips about overloaded and transformative reactions. They are in a way both cheap to build and somewhat expensive to build. Since transformative reactions are based on your character level, ideally you want your characters at level 90. Next you want as much elemental mastery as possible. The only things that affect transformative reaction damage are the character's level, the character's elemental mastery, and the target's resistance. Hence why Sucrose or Venti with the Viridescent Veneer are powerful supports for this. Also, Elemental Mastery main stat artifacts for the Timepiece, Goblet, and Circlet are actually the rarest out of any main stats. But fortunately, if all you care about is transformative reaction damage, you really don't need to care about the substats, but really go for onset pieces with Elemental Mastery main stats. My initial impression is that if you happen to have level 90 characters, like Venti, Lisa, whatever, and a bunch of Elemental Mastery main stat artifacts, Facts, this is a reasonable approach to doing more damage. Overall though, it is a bit too early since the release of these buffs for me to provide any advice beyond this. I believe that some characters can have more competitive builds with Elemental Mastery now compared to the conventional crit rate and crit damage builds. But like I said, it is still currently too early for me to provide any additional empirical advice right now. Perhaps Electro Charge can do better than Overloaded. Let me know if you'd like to see a video on Electro Charge or a deeper dive into transformative reactions. I regularly make character guide videos, Constellation Zero character showcase videos, DPS showdowns, and more. So be sure to smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of that stuff. Thanks for watching. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.